Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's pour. It's going to be a car themed one again. Um, I know it's a big shocker to everybody out there, but uh, I'm going with a car that I uh, I've always liked the car. Um, I actually had a later version of uh, this car, uh, not the old muscle car, but uh, they brought it back in the early 2000s, I think it was, or at least this, that's, I had a 2006 of it, I believe it was. Um, but tonight is going to be a 1970 Dodge Charger RT. And I love the purple. It's got the white stripe on the back of it. This one does have the engine popping up out of it. It's not a Hot Wheels brand. Um, I just saw this one and one other one in uh, Walmart the other day and grabbed them up. Uh, I'll be doing the other one. It was a silver and black one. I, it wasn't a Charger, though. I can't remember what it was. Um, I think it was a Roadrunner. But uh, so I wanted to do the Charger one. And I decided to go, since it's a purple, I decided to go with a white background and do the purple. And I'm going to add just a little bit of gold because I've just kind of been in a purple and gold kick here lately. I like the I like those two mixed together. Uh, they go well together. Even though this doesn't have gold in it, I'm going to put a little bit in there just to, just to give it a little bit more color. Um, I was going to go with just two different... Uh, shades of purple. I have actually a deep violet that I'm going with um, and I'm going to be using uh, this one which you can see I got on sale for 74 cents which is a good buy but it's a deep violet and then I'm going with uh, gold from Master's Touch. This one is uh, the fine touch. It's basically the same thing I'm going to guess. But uh, I have some other shades of purple, but they're uh, they're really not the kind of purple that the, the I don't want it too light or too pinkish because some are some are a uh, real pinkish type of purple, and one was just too light, so um, I'm that's why I'm thinking I'm just going to go with the purple and a little bit of gold. I know it's not. Uh, kind of going with the theme I have with matching the colors, trying to match the colors that go in it. I mean, it will have purple in it. And uh, so that's what we're going to go with tonight. And uh, been working on some ideas on some other stuff that will be coming up soon. I'm, I'm pretty excited about another one I just finished up last night. I think it's going to turn out uh, just awesome. Um, but I'm sure that one, that video will probably come out before this one. So be sure to like and subscribe uh, to the channel and you'll be able to see all those videos that um, I do and, and catch all the all the pieces that I do so with that well, I'm going to get the paints mixed and we'll get started alright I got the paints mixed so I'm going to start off by measuring leveling my canvas just to make sure it's pretty level so we'll um, I've decided to do it uh, just a tad different um, instead of doing a just a long thin I, I'm thinking I'm going to start out kind of thin and then I'm just going to blow it all out and just cover this half of it with the purple and gold and I think I'm going to try to get the gold more in the center and the purples all across it and let's hope I get enough paint and my Floetrol, this bottle has just had junk in it. Junk, junk, junk in it. So I might have to be pulling off a little bit of this, some stringiness that was on there. I usually could pull it out while I'm mixing it, but I didn't on this one. Let's see, I'll get my tool. And I have some paints left over from last night. I'm not going to use it on this pour, but I think I'm going to just do a probably an 8x10. I don't have that much paint left, and I'll probably have some paint left over from this pour. So, I'll either do a 12, I think I have some 12x12s, 12 or let's see how much paint I have, or an 8x10. 
because I do sell a lot of 8x10s, so I usually don't resin those at all. I just spray them with a the gloss enamel. It used to be that's about all I did was 8x10s. And uh, I think I had a few hundred at one time. I usually take a hundred or so to shows. I think the most I ever sold to one person, eight by tens was nine. Uh, so uh, they do sell well. And I do sell them fairly, I sell them at a good price. I just sell them for $10 a piece. Some of them I think, oops, there's some of that gunk. Some of them I think are Some of them I think that are really nice pieces, or at least that I think they're nice pieces. I think they should go more than $10. They're worth more than $10, but that's what I sell them all at because some of them aren't. But there's some that I've sold that I thought I would never sell because I did not I did not like them personally. But that's one thing you should always remember that somebody else might like it, whether you like it or not. Because uh, there were some that I'm like, these are just ugly. <laughs> and uh, they found a home. So that's good. I'm glad I kept them and didn't paint over them. I mean, I have painted over a lot of stuff, but I am glad that somebody found beauty in it and spent $10 to buy it. Ooh, stuff's getting sticky. Alright, get some of these air bubbles out and we'll get going on this. stuff dripping off you can pick some up and throw it back on there which reminds me of a of a I was hired to I was hired to do a birthday party for some 10 year old little girls and show them teach them how to paint and uh, so they all got to paint a painting and it was so much fun. But we had, I had this one little girl that, cause I bought aprons for all of them, little cheap aprons, like a dollar general, I think it was. And uh, but this, I don't know if this girl had it on her or took it off, but she was like right up on it. She had paint all over her shirt. She's running it around she's picking it back up off the table and throwing it back throwing it back down but she was having a good old time and uh but she definitely uh probably got in trouble for getting paint all over her clothes that uh, was funny all right so we're gonna put a lot of purple in a lot more than what I usually do. Get up there, Matt. I already had a, looks like I already had a gnat. Ugh. There's my stick. Just to make sure I landed right in the paint, but he's gonna, on the side, he's gonna run off.
bubbles out. cleaned up my room and now it's already a mess. Mm -hmm. Alright, sorry for the delay, but I'm looking for my straw. I have a bag of them. I just, I think they're out in the other room right now because I haven't brought everything back in. Alright, All right, it took me a little bit, but I did find them. And I do want to add a little bit more purple to it. I don't have much left.
Now, one of the reasons I, I did that is I wanted it more of a flow this way. I kind of got it where it, uh, when I was blowing it out with the hairdryer, I kind of went like this to spread it out and I got it going more this way and I wanted it more that way. And uh, I don't like the, I wanted it thin, thinner up here, so we're gonna work with that. So we're gonna move this paint over. So we'll continue to blow. I pick up the paper towel that has the has the white paint on it. Alright, so I think that's uh, not too bad. Again, it's not exactly what I wanted, but I do like how it comes out and it goes out the rest of the way, not just the thin. Even though I do like the kind of minimal amount of color, it works for some. Uh, I don't think it's not too bad on this one. So, I think I'm going to leave it as is. 
See how it comes out. Just doing a little tweaking. I know I learned a number of years ago that sometimes tweaking, most of the time tweaking is alright, but tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and really doing stuff can really uh, make it worse. So I think I will leave it at that. And, uh, that should be it for this one. All right, we got this one ready and it's ready for its resin. So let's get started with it. I've already taped the back. I always tape the backs because uh, you get those little hardened droplets and they're hard to get off. Just to pull off or cut off or drip. Dremel off or whatever you want to do. It is, believe me, it is well worth putting tape, taping the back. And you can pull them off and just, you can get that pulled off within minutes and have a nice clean back on it, which is what you want. So we've got, uh, I've got a lot of things going on, a lot of paintings working on, I'm kind of excited because I was kind of in a, I don't know what you'd call it, a drought and uh, a fluid acrylic painting drought, I guess, I don't know what you would call it, uh, artist block just wasn't inspired by anything and just I would sometimes would go weeks without painting which for me when I started painting fluid acrylics I painted every day for months and months and months and it was I don't know if you call it therapeutic for me but it sure I sure wanted to and I thought about it all the time even when I was at work, which sometimes my work doesn't really require at, at least the job that I had at the time. I mean, I still work at the same place. I just have a different position. But at the time, I was just a menial task type person. And so I didn't have to think a whole lot, so I spent a lot of my time thinking of painting. <clears throat> so, now I have a little bit more responsibilities and a lot more than what I did. And I have to use my brain more than my brawn. So, I don't think about it as much, but I still come up with stuff while I'm working. But anyway, it's nice to be back in a groove and painting and putting out some good work. You know, I'd also go through spouts where, or bouts or whatever you want to call them, where nothing I did I liked and I didn't think it was good at all. And then you do one ever, just one really good piece every now and then and then you it's like you almost couldn't remember how you even actually did it and uh, so but now I'm kind of getting in a groove this 
these Hot Wheels themed paintings are really have been very good for me for my creativity and ideas and just helping me with all of that so I can uh, get my creativity out which is showing in a lot of these uh, paintings and I probably am like a lot of people I will admit I do like even though it's weird for me to get attention on on these things I kind of like the attention that I get the likes I hate to be one of those that oh, I, need, I need more likes I why didn't I get more likes but I did I do seem to fall into that sometimes <clears throat> and I understand from like a lot of my personal friends when I first started posting, when I first started doing these and posting these, they, I would get hundreds of likes, and then I don't hardly get any from, you know, my real friends on Facebook or whatever, but I mean real friends in real life, because they probably like, a, oh geez, there he goes again, putting another one on there, enough already. I don't know if that's what they're saying, but sometimes that's how you think. Like, oh, they used to like everything, you know. I don't like anything. So. Like I've mentioned before in other videos, is I just torch, torch, torch. Um, you really have to get a good, a good, uh, a good light to get a good glare off of it to really see, because you can just blow out the bubbles with the naked eye, just kind of looking down on it. You can see all those, and you can see them popping and everything, and you looking at it from above you can really tell that it's excuse me it's really uh they're all out all the bubbles are gone you got it good and it looks glassy and then you get on the a nice light and you get uh, a shine off of it and boy you can see them all sitting there like oh my gosh so that's what i do as i look at all these and look and torch and look there's still some right there, some right there, because I, you do see those in the, in the end, so, well, I think this one is about done, my last one had a ton in it, I don't know, it seemed like I was, was going to take me forever to get those things out of there, but I got them out. stand up to place this thing on there so we got the car 70 Dodge Charger RT and uh, I love the Charger like I said I had a 2006 I didn't have the old muscle car like this one um, I think a cousin of mine I never did actually see the car but I think my a cousin of mine had one that he fixed up. I sure would like to see it. I don't know if he still has it or not. Of course, I haven't seen him and I couldn't tell you how many years. He moved out to California um, and I haven't seen him since then. So uh, 
he does have one of my paintings. His dad, my uncle, bought um, bought some paintings from me, or I painted some for him to give uh, to them for Christmas presents a couple of years ago. So, but anyway, um, what I what I've done is um, is I put gold in this just to, because I like purple and gold together. Even though this card does not have gold in it. Um, but I wanted a little bit more color to it as well. I mean, there's no rule that says it has to be the colors of the car. That's just something I came up with in the beginning. And I try to match the, the colors of the, of the car I'm doing. So, but, <coughs> excuse me. But, so... I'm trying to think if I was thinking of this earlier, I placed it on there and I can't remember where I was going to do it because normally I would put it here, but that's, I've got it quite, quite a ways up. I don't want the car almost off the canvas, you know? Um, so I thought about putting it here, but I think I'm going to put it about right here. I think is where I did where the front wheels are like maybe on here. Because if you put it like here, it's almost like it's going through through something and it's the wake of it. But I think I am going to put it, and we can move this around. I think right in there would be good. So let me see here. Maybe up just a little bit. <laughs> Try to get it straightened out a little bit. All right. And there she is. I think that's a good spot for her. And uh, we have another finished one. I think it looks great. I love purple. I love the purple and gold. And uh, I love the Dodge Charger. So, to me, this one is a winner. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.